Uh, you great to have you, Rush Limbaugh on the EIV Network, Limbaugh Institute, Advanced Conservative Studies. I checked the uh, email during the break. If I, an interesting question, Rush. You haven't talked about the second indictments that have been handed down to Paul Manafort. And I'm, I'm paraphrasing the email, but the question basically is these things still have nothing to do with even the campaign. Everything Manafort's being indicted for happened before the campaign. And then a letter writer very astutely mentioned that Mueller is changing the venue from Washington, D.C. to the Eastern District of Virginia, which is where Manafort lives. And while that is an interesting aspect of this, the, the, the email says, what is going on? Folks, let me just remind you again. I've, I've kind of been on this uh, high horse for the past two or three days, but nothing has changed. Just because it's not in the news every day, because it has not been the focus of the drive-by media each and every day. The Mueller investigation remains with one purpose, and that's to destroy, get rid of Donald Trump. However they can manage it, that's the purpose. And no matter what is reported day in and day out about the progress, that objective has not changed. There hasn't been any laziness that has swept in. There hasn't been any loss of emotion or energy on the part of the prosecutors, investigators. The objective is to still get rid of Donald Trump. And the mechanism for doing this, their best bet is for the Democrats to win the 18 midterms and then in the House and then impeach Trump with whatever case and evidence is presented by Mueller. That hasn't changed. The focus of the investigation hasn't changed. The investigation is not looking at Hillary Clinton. It's not looking at Fusion GPS. There have been ample, there has been ample opportunity to indict or charge Hillary Clinton. These people have had two or three chances since 2016, and they pass every one of them. I get email from people that suggest, you know, Rush, I think you're missing the point here. I think Mueller's being very crafty. I think Mueller is actually building a case against Hillary and is going to be shocking everybody when she and Steele end up being indicted. And that's a wonderful wish list. But my friends, honestly have to chuckle because Hillary's been exonerated. It happened on July 5th, 2016. She's been exonerated on her email stuff. By order of Barack Obama. When Obama publicly says, as he did, she didn't do anything wrong. She didn't intend to do anything wrong, and she didn't do anything wrong. Obama was ordering his minions in the media to let her go. They've had, I don't know how many opportunities to lower the boom on her. And to think that there's some secret element of the investigation where that's going to happen. Sadly, it's wishful thinking. What is happening? Why the additional indictments on Manafort? And why now the guilty plea from Rick Gates? Well, I, of course, don't know. But using my intelligence, guided by experience, coupled with my un unwavering opinion of what this whole objective is, I think that, that, that Mueller is doing everything he can to pressure Manafort into saying that he either saw collusion or saw obstruction. Mueller needs a witness. To date, there has been no leak confirming any evidence of collusion exists because it didn't happen. But if enough pressure can be applied, as it was to Flynn, if enough pressure can be applied, Manafort, with these two indictments, is facing the rest of his life in jail. And the indictments now are serious. The first indictments were not swept away. They were added on to. But now we've got money laundering. Now we've got tax avoidance, multiple counts, 32 counts, I think, in this latest indictment. And if he's convicted on all of them, he can say goodbye to any quality of life ever. So, And this is pressure designed to get Manafort to say what Mueller wants to hear. 
Rush, Rush doesn't, doesn't, what Manafort says has to be true. Well, you would think. But in something like this, believe me, it can be structured. And I, I, I'm just trying to tell you that the objective here hasn't changed. And just because you don't see as much news coverage on it, it doesn't mean that the investigation is petering out. It doesn't mean that uh, it's about to end because they've looked everywhere they can and haven't found anything. The objective is to get rid of Donald Trump. It has not changed. And it will not change. So Rick Gates, the so-called former Trump campaign aide, who has been indicted along with uh, Paul Manafort, has decided to plead guilty. And he sent his family a big, long letter explaining why. The letter has been publicized. And he essentially says that public humiliation is a small price to pay for family angst and disaster. Live from the Southern Command in sunny South Florida, it's Open Line Friday! And that's how you do it! Greetings and welcome back. Open line Friday. Rush Limbaugh in fine form today. Well-known radio raconteur, general, all-round good guy, and I've been doing this a long time. 800-282-2882. If you would like to join us, here is the letter that was so-called obtained by ABC News. Rick Gates is 45 years old. You never heard of him until this happened. He's a minor bit player. I'm not saying that he and Manafort are innocent. Don't misunderstand. I, I have no way of knowing. I, all I know is that the things they're accused of doing have nothing to do with the Trump campaign. They all happened before Trump even decided to run for the presidency. All I know is that Trump is the target. He's always been the target. He remains the target. There is no other target. Trump is it. Uh, good friend sent a note. Rush, you know they've got to have the dirt on so many Democrats here. You look at Christopher Steele. You look at Hillary and Debbie Blabbermouth Schultz and all the stuff that went on at DNC. And then you've got the Podestas and so forth. I will be shocked if a single Democrat is ever discovered to be investigated. In this investigation, I will be shocked. I guess it may be. It may be that some Democrat, obscure, low Democrat somewhere, might get indicted for something in this so that the investigation can demonstrate its bipartisan uh, nature. But anyway, here's Gates's letter to his, to his, his part of it. He's 45 years old. His family's young. He wrote to family and friends that despite my initial desire to vigorously defend myself, I've had a change of heart. The reality of how long this legal process will likely take, the cost, and the circus-like atmosphere of an anticipated trial are too much. I will better serve my family moving forward by exiting the process. Essentially the same thing Michael Flynn did. Gates will run out of money. His children's future will run out of money. He will not be able to continue his defense if he decides or decided to go down that path. And so the lesser of two options is to take the plea, go to jail, suffer the humiliation, but have a day down the road where he gets out of jail, still has some semblance of a uh, financial base with which to perhaps begin to rebuild life. But in, in this case, and particularly Manafort, ju just, just to repeat, the objective here is to get these guys, it's called flipping, and they're really being pressured. Manafort is really being pressured. The, the, the indictments against Manafort, he would spend the rest of his life in jail. And this is white-collar crime. 
It's bank fraud. It's tax fraud. It's money laundering. It's all kinds of really bad stuff for which sentencing guidelines, 32 different counts in this indictment, he could he could figuratively, I mean, literally spend the rest of his life in uh, in jail. That's on one hand. In the other hand, here's Mueller and his investigators saying, but you know, it doesn't have to be that way, Paul. It would always be Paul. It wouldn't be Mr. Manafort. They become friends, kind of like the Stockholm syndrome, syndrome of the kidnap victim. It doesn't have to be this way, Paul. It, it, you just have to, you just, you just have to unburden. You just have to tell us what you and I already know, Paul. You just have to confirm to us that the campaign was working with Russia. You just have to, or alter, Paul, you just have to tell us what you know about how the president was trying to shut us down. Obstruct justice. Mueller needs a witness because there isn't any evidence. Now, I'm going to have to ask people more informed than I. And you might find even the question kind of problematic. I'm sitting here asking myself, can the special counsel pressure an accused, here in the case of Manafort, could they pressure him to lie and say he saw something he didn't see? And then would they accept it knowing that he's lied? Now, I know the boilerplate answer, how could you even assume such a thing about our legal justice system, Mr. Lim? Of course, there isn't a prosecutor in the world that would take false evidence and try to pass it off as real. I used to think that. I used to, I used to instinctively believe that. But I know that this is a political counterterrorism investigation that's being made to look like a criminal investigation. And I have learned that it is perfectly fine for prosecutors and cops to lie to suspects in pursuit of a confession. So they desperately want Trump and they have, who knows, endless amounts of money and the full force power and pressure of the massive federal government behind them. And what's telling is that there isn't any evidence yet. And, and there, there won't be any real evidence because Trump didn't collude. That all happened on the Democrat side. That's what makes this doubly outrageous.